I am not an animal. Yes, you guessed it, the 1980s classic, The Elephant Man. We're gonna be taking a deep dive into The Elephant Man, but more importantly, we're gonna be taking a deep dive into a series of films that were nominated for many Oscar awards, but won none. Why? Well, listen and find out. Okay, well, here we are talking about the Elephant Man. And so, because I brought some props, they're little, because I don't have a lot. First of all, I've got a jungle headband, which I have to take off because it's giving me a headache. And a 19th century popper top from the 19th century to nice. represent the Victorian style of this picture. Love it, Deb. First of all, the Elephant Man, if people don't know about it, is about a horribly disfigured person that was a real life person, John Merrick in Victorian England. He was saved by this Dr. Treves, played beautifully by Anthony Hopkins, and taken to a hospital for study. Right, it's a plot about courage and overcoming your disabilities, overcoming your obstacles. How about a review? Shall we well, show them? Well, we have paddles. I am giving this picture. Let's show them the title. Look at the paddles. The folks. real watch list. Debbie gives this a nine Whoa. with a deformed elephant because I can't draw on the bottom. Oh my God. I well, know. what can I tell Debbie, you? Debbie, I give it an eight with a deformed elephant also. Well, your elephant's better than mine. And we're going to talk about why my score is a little bit lower than yours. Okay. Go ahead. I love this movie. I saw it when I was much younger and I got a chance to see it again. And you know what? I just love the black and white. It made you feel like you're watching an old movie. The scenes, the settings, the edits. What I did like was the inaccuracies of the film. I was feeling for John Merrick, the sideshow manager, brutally beating and uh, abusing John Merrick. But in actuality, that's not the case. Correct. And back in the day, freaks actually liked being in freak shows because that's how they made their right. money. There was no other way for to do, to do it. Right. And in John Merrick's case, he had such a love for his mother. And um, unfortunately, when she passed away, he had to live with his father, who had remarried and they forced him to work. He took on a job as like a traveling salesman, knocking door to door. Now you gotta imagine a disfigured human being, a man, a young man in his 20s, going door to door with a head that's three foot wide and a disfigured arm that he couldn't use walking door to door. So the only alternative that he had was to go into the carny and actually right. be a sideshow freak. Well, let me say something about that. The interesting thing is John Merrick was born a normal child. And until he was about three years old, he started getting disfigured. Mm -hmm. And Victorian England was, uh, as well as America, there were three big hospitals in New York, even though I can give an analogy, was The Nick, which was a great show on Cinemax, and Bellevue, and also Columbia. But they thought in England, because his mother was frightened and run over by an elephant at a fair, right. that he turned into an elephant. Right. So Dr. Treves, played gorgeously by Anthony Hopkins. I agree, 100%. Is, takes him in to study him. And it's interesting because him. at one point in the film, he thinks that he's just like the sideshow manager that he's putting this disfigured thing out to the medical public and to high society. Correct. London. Correct. And he starts to, starts to question himself. Is right. he just the same man that's abusing John Merrick, but just in a different way? Right. Let's talk about the crew a little bit. David Lynch, who's a director, mm -hmm. it was a departure film for him, and the producer, Mel Brooks. That's why you see Anne Bancroft in the movie. Right, and that he Mel Brooks, her. I'm gonna interject because I found this fascinating. Mel Brooks's name never appears on the credits. Correct. Because he didn't want the film to be comedic. Right, so exactly. So I saw him as part of this film, there would be a joke. A departure film right. for a person. But the, the thing about the, the film that makes it nominated for Oscars is cinematic visually. It has some of the most beautiful black and white photography. There's one visual of Anthony Hopkins' face the first time he sees Merrick yes, that they do a close-up mm -hmm. and a pull-in shot that is so arresting and beautiful with Anthony Hopkins crying mm -hmm. that it's amazing. And because of the way it's filmed so well, you get this claustrophobia about it that at the end of the movie you almost feel like a wash rag that was wrung out because Oh my God, you carry the heavy weight of this picture, especially where the mob outside that was lowbrow right. paid the, the horrible guy that was a janitor or whatever, mm -hmm. had people pay him to look through the windows, right. hookers, the low life of London. Mm -hmm. And at the time, that was really kind of like the high elite and the low life. Right. It beautifully comes around at the end. He goes through a kidnapping by his manager and brings him back out on the road and he's, he can't be found and 
you know, this man that finally gets his self-esteem back is brought down to the, the depths of his right. disgraced soul. He's able to get back to London and he sort of wraps up his, his life really beautifully. He wants to be able to fall asleep like a normal person. Mm -hmm. He is not able to with his disease, so he could only sleep standing, basically propped up. He finally goes to sleep and that's how he dies. And it was just be so beautifully exactly. done. It was nominated for eight Academy Awards, Best Picture, Best Leading Role, and a whole host of other uh, awards, but it won none, why? But let's talk about what did win at the Oscars and why. Well, that's important because sometimes it's not about how great your movie right. is, but who you're competing against. Exactly. So they were competing against um, Ordinary People, Coal Miner's Daughter, Raging Bull, and Tess. And as many reviewers have said, that was sort of the year of the regular people award. Yes. They were movies just about everyday people right. trying to make it through life. Well, a lot of reason why ordinary people kind of swept it is because Robert Redford was a director. Mm -hmm. He was starting Sundance. It was a big deal. He's a big deal. And it is kind of a popularity contest. Sure. Worse now than mm -hmm. it was back then. Mm -hmm. But what shocked me is that Raging Bull didn't win. Right. And Raging Bull is the film that made me want to be a film critic. Oh, I do. And uh, so, I mean, that's a fine picture that actually has more legs, it's on TV more, mm -hmm. it's talked about more, it's referred to. You would think that it would win something, right. but in the end, it won nothing. Matter of fact, it, there was such a protest against that, that the following year, the Academy Awards included another category, makeup. The makeup was so intense that John Hurt, mm -hmm. of who played John Merrick, and, and people might remember him from Aliens, he's right. one of the things comes out of his stomach, mm -hmm. John Hurt. He, he, had to, he had to film every other day oh my God. because the makeup was so claustrophobic and so heavy and so awful that he, he just could not film every day. Right. But what do you think about movies that are not true to the original true story? Well, because it did such a great job of dramatizing it. Because when I originally saw the movie and then saw it again, I'm like, oh, I'm still feeling those same feelings. I feel so sad. He was so abused. Like, right. that, that gets such a reaction for me. But as I was taking that dive, I'm like, he was never abused. Well, I felt sad, but I also felt uh, more claustrophobic and more like, like, ugh, you know, like, oh, my, there for the grace of God go I. Mm -hmm. Like, what a horrible existence this poor thing had, and he was so intelligent. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it all the more terrible. He was, Yeah, you know, but I, I, I agree, but I disagree in that it didn't tell the true story because, oh, and then again, maybe it wouldn't have been a great movie if they didn't have that drama element right. to it with the abuse and uh, his willingness or non-willingness to be in a sideshow because he wanted to be there in true life. Yes. He actually made money. He liked it. He did. The movie never displayed that. No, they don't. But they you need a willing suspension of disbelief for films. And when Hollywood gets a hold of something, it's usually never the same as the book. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can name like 10 movies that are yeah, but true I feel to the like, book. Yeah, but I feel like, like I got fooled. Right. You're right. It's never going to be 100%, and it shouldn't be, because you have to give elements of drama or comedy or something to make it more interesting for the audience. Right. Well, that's your thing. I that's totally thing. get it. But as far as telling people about this movie, it's really, really worth watching, mm -hmm. because it is so true to the period, especially the period in, in Victorian medical society, mm -hmm. because this is what they did. And believe it or not, it was really strange back then. They even started doing nose jobs. Can you imagine? No, I didn't know that. But the, and, and people, in order to get test subjects, mm -hmm. they would actually murder people on the street to mm -hmm. bring to the hospitals because they got $25 for, wow. for, uh, for, for a corpse. corpse. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so to stop murdering people, they started drowning them so the police couldn't tell that right. they didn't die a natural death. I'm sorry. What? It's time for a commercial break and announce our sponsor. We have a sponsor this week, and it's... Who? Um, guys, do we have a sponsor? Do we? Nope. We don't have a sponsor. But you can be a sponsor to Bold Media Films, The Real Watchlist Plus. Just look us up on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google, or check us out at the Art Factory in Patterson. So please, we need sponsors, please. I guess we're not getting paid this week. 
but I do want to say something. If people yeah. like this movie, I have some other movies on my list for you to watch. One German film called The Enigma of Caspar Hauser, which is a no, German nothing about film. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter, it's really cool. It's about the same type of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's an international one. What about also, Mask? Mask is one I was going to mm -hmm. mention with mm -hmm. Eric Stoltz and Cher. Mm -hmm. Awakenings with Robert De Niro, which was yes. filmed in a mental asylum with Robert, Robin Williams mm -hmm. and his transformation from a drug that Robin Williams created. And then it goes full circle where right. he goes back. And also um, The Nick on Cinemax, which mm -hmm. you can still get on demand. And Dylan McDermott is the lead in it, and it's a great thing about the Victorian medical times. Right. And, and Wait a minute, I hear the gong. That's our cue that we, we need to wrap it up. Well, folks, it's not always about the greatness of a film, but it's who your competitor is when it comes to winning an Oscar. Right, and who's popular that year mm -hmm. on the way they do things. Exactly, so folks- we don't agree with all the time. So while we're just a point off, we do recommend that you go see Get on streaming, The Elephant Man. It's a great movie to watch. Way down, down the <laughs> so. river, far, far from way. Da, 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 da. Dun, There's dun, where my heart is laying. Okay, we gotta make up new words because we can't remember the old ones. <laughs>